Right, for the first one, you might be able to, you might get caught, all right? But if there's witnesses for the rest of them, you will get caught too. Why? Because they're going to blame you for it, right? Because they caught you for this one. That means you most likely did the rest of them, and the judge will say it was you. Never leave witnesses. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. And today we are talking about just the mother load of found footage. This footage has everything. It was shot on VHS tape. Nobody knows who made it. Nobody knows who started distributing it. And the video itself is just creepy as hell. I have several sources for this video and as usual, I will link them in the description below. However, a particular huge thank you to this interview that I found with a man named Jesse Pollack, who's an author, filmmaker, and podcaster who has studied this case in depth and was interviewed on Foreign Seek. Legend has it, there was this VHS tape circulating back in the 1990s entitled Grave Robbing for Morons. The video is simply a talking head, basically, of a man who calls himself Anthony. And in the almost half hour video, he gives very clear, specific, detailed instructions on how to take remains and things from people's graves. We have no solid proof to this day whether this video is a hoax or if it's genuine. And then the other crazy thing is that in spite of how much this tape has been shared around over the years, nobody knows who made the video. All the people in the video or the voices we hear in the video, none of those people have been identified. Supposedly, you can still buy this tape in VHS form online in places like eBay's if you're lucky enough to find it. However, in all of my research, I've only heard of people being able to find the DVD form. I'm sure a VHS version exists out there somewhere. The original tape that started circulating is actually a set of four half hour movies included on one tape that was called Ensuring Your Place in Hell. Ensuring Your Place in Hell included Grave Robbing for Morons and another three different videos called Mortuary of the Dead, Cooking with Huck Botko, and Exploding Vermints. Though the latter two have supposedly since been proven fake. Cooking with Huck Botko is a morbid and fictional cooking show about poisoning your family and friends with food and basically taking revenge on them this way. We know that this particular one is fake or fictional because Huck Botko is a known film director. Exploding Varmints, on the other hand, is exactly what it sounds like and I will let you fill in the blanks there. And many people claim that this one is fake and I'm sure that it is. I'm highly, it's highly, highly unlikely that it's real just given what the video is, but I couldn't find any solid evidence to back up the fact that it was fictional. So I don't want to say 100% on this video because I am not positive. But then the fourth one included on this tape is Mortuary of the Dead. And that one is also highly questioned whether it's real or fake, and we still don't know to this day. This video shows three men breaking into a mortuary and looking at dead body parts. Because of the realistic nature of this video, a lot of people do think it may be real. Okay, let's talk about the tape itself. I watched the whole thing so you don't have to, and I will basically give you all the highlights of it. The tape runs 26 minutes and 46 seconds long, with only one man shown on camera, though we hear some other voices in the background. It opens with a very realistic looking skull. There's a man in the video, or a boy, I don't know, he may be in his 20s at the latest, but he looks like a teenager to me. He's presenting the skull to the camera, has a very obvious speech impediment, and he starts to talk about ways to remove things from the skull, such as hair. His hands are very visibly dirty, as if he just retrieved this thing recently. He then starts to go into graphic detail of not only how to remove the skull from the remains when robbing a grave, but then how to construct it back together if pieces have fallen off, how to clean the outside of the skull, and the inside, and other decorative things. At one point in the video, he talks about how you could put a candle on top of it because that just looks really cool. 
We won't even get to the disrespect to real human remains here right now. We'll talk about it later. He then starts talking about how you know if you're on the market for remains, how to know if it's real authentic ones or if they're fake how to tell if the particular remains you're shopping for are older ones or newer ones. And then the really disturbing part of the tape, he starts to talk about how you should quote, never leave witnesses. He goes on to explain that if you do happen to run into a witness and get caught in the act of grave robbing, then you should definitely knock the witness out so that they will be unconscious enough that they will feel like it was all a dream and they won't be able to identify you. And this Anthony says it's best not to kill, but if you have to, then you should do it. Hope you're all sensing my sarcasm here. He goes on to say the best weather for doing this, the best time of year for doing this, and about how much money you can make on the black market for doing it. He talks about how to uh, deconstruct the body if you happen to dig up a fresher body. He talks about how the more famous the person is that you're robbing, the more money you'll get for it. Lastly, make sure you get laid the night before you go because you want a lot of energy for that night and that will give you lots of energy. He ends the video by giving credit to himself and his three friends, but only of course lists their first names. Then he closes out the video mentioning that they're going to quote, hit Houdini's grave next. If you choose to go watch this video, there's nothing innately upsetting about it. It's not graphic or anything like that. You're just gonna feel really uncomfortable watching it. Like you're seeing something you shouldn't be seeing. And with that, it's just very eerie and odd that the boy in the video is talking about it in a very subdued, relaxed way. Like he brought you into his teenage room and he's showing you his coin collection. Obviously, if it's not cleared by now, I do not condone anything that he's talking about. This video is more about the found footage and whether it's real or fake. Everything he does and talks about is like whether he's serious or not is terrible and you should not nobody should do that not endorsing these actions whatsoever if he was really doing this he's an asshole okay so that's the video itself now there's just so much to unpack here now from this interview article i was talking about there is a very solid theory that it was a man named ricky casso that inspired this whole video to be made ricky casso is known for killing his friend gary lowers in 1984 for a supposed satanic ritual in the months leading up to the murder ricky apparently did some grave robbing and had been arrested for the crime in 1983 and 1984. It is known that he wanted to steal a skull for the ritual and he was going to allegedly perform it at the Amityville Horror House. So then in 1987, a few years later, the book from David St. Clair called Say You Love Satan came out. It was an extremely popular book back in the day, especially because this is the time of the satanic panic, but it was particularly popular with younger people, teenagers, or the punk scene in the late 80s. The book, don't get me wrong, is a fictionalized version of the Ricky Casso story. But in the book, he talks about this crime and mentions, and I quote, a store in Greenwich Village that pays $500 for a skull. And as it turns out, the kid, Anthony, in this video says that quote almost exactly. What you do, um, so you go to like a magic shop where they like, um, skulls and everything for rituals. Okay. So um, I think you could get around 250 for one of these. If you get a leg bone and it's carved into a, um, a necklace or, or, um, or something, you might get around 650 for it. So it's theorized that maybe he had read that book and this inspired this whole thing. Now all that lines up perfectly with the timeline we're working with here. We know that this little VHS tape was made at least in 1987 or later. We know this because Evil Dead 2 Dead by Dawn movie can be seen in the background of the video and that came out in 1987. The other thing we know about this video is that this Anthony kid most likely lives in Queens, New York or at least close to it. First of all, he just speaks with a very heavy New York accent. And at the end of the video, he mentions digging up Harry Houdini, who is buried in Queens, New York. 
Let's talk about some theories of who made this video. First, I'm just going to debunk a few theories that you're going to see on pretty much every internet forum. The first one, you'll see this one a lot, around a lot. Many people believe that this is a famous grave robber, Anthony Casamassima. Anthony Casamassima was a man who was arrested in 1999 for stealing objects from graves. And people point out that at about 25 minute 33 seconds into the video, the boy says that this little film was made by him, Anthony Cass, and then he cuts off. He then says, let's forget last names before crediting the first names of his friends who were helping him. Okay, this was made by, uh, by Anthony Cass, uh, uh, um, well, as a matter of fact, let's forget the last name. This makes people believe that perhaps it's the same person. However, the real Anthony Casamassima was in his 40s when he was arrested. And we know that he was born in 1959. We know that the tape was made at least in 1987 or later, which means this kid in the video would have been at least 28 when this video was made in order to be the real Anthony Casamassima. And I'm sorry, there's no way he is almost 30 years old. To me, it sounds like this could just be attributed to a speech impediment and that he just made a mistake when he started to say that and it sounded like Cass. The other thing is the real Anthony Cass Messia never stole remains from graves. As far as we know, he only stole objects. My best guess is that the kid in the video was just a huge fan of the real Anthony Cass Messia and so he was just using his first name as a pseudonym because he was a big fan. Okay, so this next theory is a little bit more controversial. Another common, common accusation that you'll see around the web is that a man named Christopher Boucher made this film. Christopher Boucher is a filmmaker. It was actually the podcast Sword and Scale that initially started this rumor and accusation back in 2017. Just because Boucher used to sell this tape on his online store and had made custom art for it. And then in the original tape, the kid that we see on screen does credit somebody named that sounds like Poochie, perhaps, and that's spelled similar to Bucci, but his name's pronounced Boucher. Um, we worked hard, um, also Bucci, Bucci and Daco um, also helped it uh, at the very beginning. So as I just said, his name is pronounced Boucher, not Bucci. And so I don't think that the Pucci in the video is who they were referring to. Additionally, Christopher Boucher was born in 1987. So he was likely very, very little, if not a baby, when this tape was made. And Christopher Boucher himself came forward and said that, yeah, Sword and Scale contacted me and they were pretty rude, calling him a hack when Christopher didn't give them the answers that they were looking for. And if you don't know the reputation behind Sword and Scale, if you do, this probably isn't a shock to you like it was not a shock to me. If you know them at all, you know that this is not surprising. They do not have the best reputation. So I really don't think that Christopher Boucher had anything to do with this. What really happened is that nobody has the copyright to this film because nobody knows who made it. So it's copyright free. So he had a website. So he was making copies of the film and selling them because he was allowed to do so. Last theory slash suspect is that was this a bootlegger named Red Hook? There's another very popular theory on places like Reddit and 4chan that say straight up they have identified the man. They believe that it's a man from Brooklyn, New York that is referred to as Red Hook, but also sometimes people call him Screws as he's known for screwing people over. Legend has it Red Hook is notorious for selling bootlegged products such as movies and clothes, but he's also been dead for 20 years. This theory is technically possible, but the biggest problem I have with this one is that it's all hearsay. Again, I have yet to find a reliable evidence or source to connect this red hook with this particular video. This seems more like just a very convincing rumor that people have said so much and said it over and over on the internet that people started to believe it. Like I said, I'm not saying it's not true. It's just that I won't believe it until I have evidence to prove that it is. Let's analyze the video itself and decide if we think it's real or not. 
when he talks about witnesses in the video. A lot of people believe that when Anthony is talking about not leaving witnesses in the video is actually a pretty good indication that the whole thing is a hoax. Mostly because advising people to just knock witnesses out so that they'll forget. Not only can you not guarantee they'll forget, but it also just seems a little far-fetched. And why would you tell people to be careful not to leave witnesses while also straight up showing your entire face on camera admitting to doing these crimes? However, on the other hand, he does imply that you should uh, take care of witnesses more permanently if you quote unquote have to. This kid to me seems young enough not only to believe these things, but also dumb enough to say them on tape. I highly doubt that he has done either of these actions to potential witnesses, as I doubt that in spite of the tape's authenticity either way, I doubt this kid is an expert grave robber. Okay, so the next is how he talks about robbing Houdini's grave at the end of the video. The video probably took place around 1987 or a little later, and yes, Harry Houdini's grave was severely vandalized in 1993. That was around the time that this video started actually circulating around on tape. However, as far as we know, Harry Houdini's body or any part of his remain has never actually been stolen. Authorities, to be fair, never confirmed that it's still intact and in the ground because they didn't take these threats of robbing his grave very seriously, and so they never actually dug it up or anything to confirm. However, it's assumed that they didn't, at least these particular boys did it, because they did tend to go for mausoleums and places that were a little bit more easy and accessible and just logically speaking, it would be pretty unlikely they'd be able to dig six feet under the ground to get somebody this famous and their remains without getting caught. And a six foot hole is just way deeper than most people really think it is until they're actually digging. The skull, the famous skull that's shown in the video. Experts have supposedly watched this video and determined that the skull in the video does in fact look real, though they can't confirm 100% without actually seeing it in person. And since it appears to have a lot of dirt and other stuff on it, it's unlikely that this kid got it from a medical facility or someplace like that and just claiming that it was from a grave. The other good point is that nobody 30 to 40 years ago, they were not making skulls this detailed that were fake. The one in the video looks like it's not only dirty, but it looks like it still has maybe some skin or some hairs on it. And you can even see something screwed into the top of the skull to indicate a placement of dentures at one point. The skull also shows signs of elongated styloid process bone, which is the result of a throat injury. And this is what it looks like on on a clean like medical skull. And here you can see a glimpse of it in the video. This is a huge debate though. A lot of self-proclaimed skull aficionados on Reddit that I've seen claim that they've seen many of skulls and they think this one is way too shiny to be real. Or that the styloid process bone that we just talked about would have fallen off of a skull like this. But I personally don't agree. I agree with the theory that this video was made way too long ago to have a fake skull that convincing that would have been cheap enough for this kid to get his hands on. He shows us the skull up close on several occasions to show us why it's real and how we should look out for fakes. And most of all, I have yet to see a real osteologist on Reddit or other forums give actual convincing reasons that we should believe this skull is fake. It looks very real to me, but again, just like everything, we don't know for sure. I personally do think that it's real. However, I mean, I can even say that as much as I want and nobody will know unless they see the actual skull in person that was in the video. And then there's the grave robbing tactics it themselves that he discusses in the video. According to experts, they are actually pretty accurate. However, these boys could have very easily gone to the library or found other ways to research that before they started making this video. So they could have just been copying information that they read elsewhere. Here's the biggest question for me that remains. There's a ton of mysteries and further questions surrounding this video, but for me, my biggest question is, yes, we know the video was made 1987 or later, but how do we know for sure that the video wasn't made way later than that? According to sources, the DVD version of the film did start circulating back in 2009, and that's kind of the earliest form that we can 
definitively find it, as it was part of the Ensuring Your Place in Hell bootleg collection. But we seem to be unable to verify an earlier version. How do we know that somebody didn't just make it in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s, but made it look as if it was filmed in the 1980s? Granted, it would be very hard to fake this 1980s setup as the clothes he's wearing, the style, the room, the you know teenage boy's room and all the things in his room is very, very 19, late 1980s, 90s convincing. So it would be very hard to set that up, but I guess it's possible. The other three movies in Ensuring Your Place in Hell, all those movies were also made in the 1990s. So it would match up that this one would also be made in the late 80s or 90s. There is the claim that it said people were able to buy VHS versions of this tape on places like eBay but I have yet to see a picture even of a VHS version of this tape, which I would love to see. I've only been able to find pictures of the DVD versions or people that talk about seeing it on the DVD or seeing the DVDs in places to buy it, or of course the YouTube video where it's been uploaded to YouTube. So I could be completely wrong. If anybody has it, or if anybody knows somebody that has the VHS version, please email it to me. Not don't email me the videotape, sorry. Don't email me the tape. Email me a photo of the VHS version because I would love to share it at least on Instagram because maybe I'm eating my words here and there is proof that it was circulating in the 1990s as well. So that's just one piece that I cannot find a solid answer for and it's driving me nuts. Conclusion. I think that the skull in the video is real. I think that this Anthony kid or whoever he really is and his friends really did go and steal it from a cemetery or a mausoleum in a cemetery. But I think maybe this was only their second or third time committing this crime at best. I just highly doubt they were seasoned grave robbers. I think they just got inspired by the aforementioned books and medias and they decided that this would be a funny tape to make. It is risky to show his face in the tape, yes, but it wasn't released until much later and it's not like anybody knows anything else about this guy. He probably knew the risk of actually getting caught was low or he was just straight up dumb. So basically my conclusion is that the video is genuine in the sense that the skull is real and I think what they're talking about is real and that they actually think that they're cool for going and committing this crime against and disrespecting people's remains. However, I don't don't believe that they are actual seasoned grave robbers who really meant to make this educational video to help educate the world. So I personally believe it's mostly real. If you see anybody claiming that they can debunk this particular VHS tape or the opposite, just remember they're not being totally truthful because the fact of the matter is nobody knows still. And until somebody comes forward or the person on the tape is definitively identified, this tape will remain a mystery. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Let me know what you think down below. Please leave this video a like to help the channel out. And I will see you guys all next week. Thank you so much to my patrons on the screen right now. Special shout out to Colin Holmes, Deck of Cards, Creep Me Out, Alice Paul, Ryan Fenton II, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Dirty Kitty, Deanna Burlston, Dawn, and Quasi. Eli.